Good day. Uh, welcome to our presentation. Uh, my name is Kutai Subanda. I'm working with my partner here, Ola Tomio Akinlaja. We are students, master students at the University of Witwatersrand. And this is a project that we did for our natural language processing module. And the topic for our project is machine translation uh, for an English to Isiluru parallel corpus. Uh, without wasting any time, we'll dive right in. So, the first question that comes to mind is, what is natural language processing? So, natural language processing is tied to machine learning. Uh, it's basically trying to give a computer the abilities of a human being. And by that, I mean the understanding and the, the ability to automate itself. So, for our project, what we're dealing with is teaching a computer how to translate an English sentence into a Zulu sentence. So now how do we do this? Right? So it's about feeding it information and giving it also the translation and letting it understand what each of the words mean. And in that way, with repetition over time, it learns. That's what machine learning essentially is. So that's what we're dealing with. So now, why teach a computer to translate? Would be the, the, the question that we ask ourselves and now we have to think of how costly it is to actually translate and also there are very limited translators in the world but why not create a program or a software that can actually do the translation instead of having to hire people or having to look for people that have to do the translation so now we looked at the effect that it's a, it's a costly process to, to do translation there have been methods that have been used in the past for language translations, but they were very expensive. And so we are looking for an automated way of doing it without having to spend so much money trying to do it. Right? So now the development of automatic machine learning translations have now been developed. And some are actually very accurate to the point where they're actually very close rivals to human translators, which is what we are, what we are aiming for as people who are doing natural, natural language processing. So now, how can we now translate English to Isiswudu? How accurately can we actually do this? Because some languages have already been translated. When you look for English to German, English to French, you know, English to Portuguese, those languages have been translated over and over. There, have, there are a lot of models that have been created to translate them. And there's a lot of information on it. But with African languages, this is something that started not long ago. We don't have much information yet, but we're still working to actually perfect this translation. So how well can we actually do? That's what we're trying to see in our project. And I'll give I'll give over to Tom to explain the models that we actually attempted to do. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so moving on to our methodology and results. Um, as my colleague has already mentioned, it is quite difficult to actually perform NLP on African languages. And we are trying to attain the, um, essentially the translation of African languages, in our case, which is Isizuru. So uh, we, we attempted three, um, the use of three models to try and achieve this goal. Um, so we, we used the sequence, sequence model, uh, we implemented a Joey NMT model, and as well as a Hagen face model. So, um, to discuss um, our results with, which we achieved through these three models, um, the sequence sequence model, um, which essentially was, it was developed from scratch basically, and we had to incorporate the use of our, our parallel corpus, our English to Isuzulu parallel corpus, to try and translate the English to Isuzulu. Um, so, it involves an encoder to decoder um, using an LSTM. Um, neural neural network, so it's essentially a, a neural translation. So basically, um, we incorporated this as well as the Joey NMT, um, which is which was a, a custom notebook provided by Masikani. Um, so it's, it's um, Masikani is basically a community of participatory um, researchers and developers who are essentially um, striving towards the betterment of of um, African NLP. So we implemented uh, one of their notebooks, so which um, 
at us um, uploading our custom data, which is our English to Zulu corpus. And then we, we ended up um, using the model to try and attain translations for, for our English text. Um, and then the Hugging Face model, which is also a, it's a pre-trained model. So basically, we essentially didn't need um, to train the, the, the model. And it has, we implemented the M, 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 M2M100, which has over 100 languages. Um, so we implemented it for Zulu to essentially translate our English text and then get some translations from that. Um, so it essentially, the argument based model is essentially uses tra transformers. So uh, we, we compared these three models to see which one essentially performed the best. Um, due to the fact that we can't necessarily use the blue score um, within multiple models, even though it's the same data set, it is not advised to use a blue score as a means for comparison. Um, but we, we compare the models in terms of the quality of the translations. And overall, um, we, we would say the Hagen Face um, Transformer model ended up performing the best. As you can see with the example over here, uh, we achieve a blue score of 0 0.5 uh, for the translation from English to Isuzulu and it was the best performing model and um, so this is uh, um, this, this can be explained as um, how the, the model is pre-trained uh, we didn't necessarily spend a lot of computing time uh, training the model and getting it to work based on our data set um, it already had the essential parameters needed to translate from English to Isuzu. So I'll, def, uh, I'll then hand over to my colleague to conclude and provide some recommendations. So from uh, the research that we did, from the training and the testing that we did, we figured out a couple of things. So the first thing that we noted was your training is what determines the quality of your prediction. If your training is done well, if it's done extensively, if it's done in a way that allows the model to properly learn or allows the algorithm to properly go through your data and learn from the data and train itself, when you actually get to test it, it's going to perform well. And so that brought us to the realization that for the two models that didn't perform well, the sequence to sequence and the Joey NMT, the major problem between those two was the training. We did not have enough data for training because our, our data our data set was quite small. It was only 4,900 uh, columns, I mean rows, sorry. And that is not enough. That is not nearly enough to train models that require an encoder and a decoder because those two require you to have a lot a lot of data that actually gets to be processed over and over and over to create these merge pairs that we need to create in order for us to actually come up with a proper corpus and be able to actually test it and evaluate it. That's why we see that our sequence to sequence did not perform very well. And then with our Joy NMT, Joy NMT was, was designed to work with massive data sets because uh, when you actually do look at examples where people used Joey and MT, they used data sets that had millions and millions of rows of data for their training. And we did not have the luxury of having such uh, large data sets. That's why we, we suffered, which is again a testament to why African NLP is actually important because we are still in the early phases of actually African translation because we do not have the, the data that we need for training. That's why we have uh, platforms like Masakane, where they are trying as, hard as, as much as they can to put together these data sets, these like-minded thinkers who are interested in African NLP. And with their work uh, moving forward and other researchers as well, we are, we are getting to develop these things, uh, these data sets that allow us to do these translations. And then with the having phase, it performed well, and we're not surprised because Number one, it's, it, it, it was specific to, to Zulu when it came to, to the predictions of the translations. Because using pre-trained models, 
allows you to skip that phase that I was talking about where we have to train the model. So if you don't have to manually train a model and you're using a pre-trained model, which is specific to the language that you're trying to translate into, you are able to get better predictions because the, 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 the pre-training has already been done using uh, adequate information. So uh, the biggest drawback was uh, the, the, the size of the data set. However, when it comes to recommendations, I think it's safe for us to recommend the use of pre-trained models uh, as opposed to actually manually having to train the data. Unless, of course, there's a large enough data set, then uh, I think it will be more recommended to actually having to do your own thing. But uh, this is what we, we found from the work that we were doing. So uh, this are our results and yeah, thank you.